Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Kevin, I'm a geek. You are watching Kevin the Geek and we're back for Doctor Who. It has been, well, nearly a month now because of course I went away on my holiday so I had to kind of pause and then I had computer issues which meant that I ran out of time in order to try and be able to do it for the first week that I was back so we're, we're here so uh, the plan for the rest of the month with Doctor Who uh, today of course I am doing um, series one episode six next week uh, it'll be the first part of the two-part finale the legend of Ruby Sunday and then after that it'll be the final episode which is Empire of Death and then the final week of the month I'm going to do a sort of overview and a roundup of my thoughts on this whole series of uh, of shooting up was first series with doctor who so stay tuned for all of that and then of course next month i will have to come back and resume my doctor who reviews of uh, of series six that's that's where i i got up to before i had to pause for this series so that should be coming back with let's kill hitler but for now we're going to check out series one episode six which is called rogue don't forget to subscribe don't forget to drop your comments down below as well but uh, yeah i'm excited to see doctor who again let's check this one out if you wish to challenge me to a duel then please sir do then i can shoot you dead whoa Whoa. Look at me. I'm so dull. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Now I get to be the bad one. Oh. Okay. So shape changing by murder. Okay. I always quite like historically themed uh, episodes, so this should be interesting for me. How do I know these moves? Psychic earrings. Choreography beamed into your motor system, tap twice to choose your moves. It's like instant strictly. Oh. Marvelous. That's a new one. Oh. oh! Well, I thought I knew everyone at my ball. Susie Costello! Summer interference. Lady Ruby, attend! Ooh, Lady Ruby. Okay, go, go, go. Enjoy. Is that like sonic earrings or something? Oh. Your Grace, where have you been hiding this absolute delight? With hair like golden strands spun in the rays of the evening sun. <clears throat> you should learn to be admired in silence. Yeah. Well, if you spoke to me and the girls like that on a Friday night down at the spinning wheel, then we'd rip you a new one, mate. Oh! Who is that? The Duke's late mother. Her eyes still follow me about the room. Oh! The the one who keeps appearing. Oh, by the saints, Lady Wallace. No, no, no. Wait here, dear. Excuse me. E excuse me, Lady Wallace. <laughs> That's how I look a lot of the times. They do say imitation is the best form of flattery. Bit more frown, maybe. Yeah, like this. <laughs> lord, not a lord. Does not a lord have a name? Rogue. Nice to meet you. I'm the doctor. Just the doctor? Just rogue. <laughs> They're gonna have a pissing contest. How brave of you to wear that gown this evening after I wore it so beautifully last season. Oh! I made a stupid mistake choosing to be star. So work. People look to me as an arbiter of taste. What? In that dress. Ooh! Maybe it will look better on me. <laughs> oh! Oh! I should have twigged that, that she was one of these. Whoever. I rely on the favour of my aunt. She would never approve of this match. I would be destitute. But you'd have me. Well done, Ruby. If the man refuses to marry the lady, she will no longer be acceptable to polite society. Oh, this really? is so Bridgerton. I can't comment on that. I've never watched Bridgerton. Or Downton Abbey. 
no one walks away from a situation with one less shoe you'd notice. I mean, Cinderella did. This is no way to die. And you knew. How? This is a murder far beyond the technology of planet Earth. It could only be done by someone brilliant. And monstrous. And ruthless. And temptable. You. Oh! You. No, oh, you. you. Excuse me. <laughs> Whoa! If you ask me, he's an idiot. Honestly, it might make Bex your time to a lamppost in his pants. <laughs> You are a bounty hunter. That is so cool. That, that's not what I thought he would say. Where did you have a spaceship in 1813? It's cloaked past that shed. Shed? <laughs> that's my ship. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's, that's a ship. No, that's a ship. <laughs> hey, put me into my room. Oh my word, is this... Is this a TARDIS? It's got like a centre console. So, this place is... a mess. Ha! <laughs> Stand there. What do those things do? It's a trap. Triform on. Triform activated. Oh! He literally walked into that trap. Triform off! Triform off? It's deadlocked. Ah! <laughs> la 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 <laughs> This authenticates me as non shoulder As a what what? It says you're hot, does it? I'm sorry, <laughs> no, it's broken. Is it uh, you're hot or no, I'm hot? No, it is just that it's Who's hot, doctor. There's a bit of sexual tension here. A little, little bit of uh, Jack, Captain Jack Harkness vibes. Look. Three. Scanning. Two. Oh, here we go. I'm much older. Oh, here we go. I'm much older and far more powerful. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's just see that again. So we've got Tennant. We've got Tennant there. You've got Whitaker. There's something much older. You've got the first Doctor. And then, right there, is that Richard E. Grant? Because Richard E. Grant has played the Doctor technically twice, which is kind of not canon because he did the curse of the fate of death the comic relief kind of special which is where you also had like um uh rowan atkinson and joanna lumley hugh grand jim broadbent but then he also did for the 30th anniversary of the show no 40th anniversary sorry of the show he did uh, Scream of the Schalke, which was an animated thing, which is where he, I believe, would have technically would have been the ninth Doctor before literally the show got announced that it was coming back and Christopher Eccleston came back in. Far more powerful. I'm a lord of time. Sorry, I'm going to watch this scene properly in a minute, but I need to see what's happening here. So you've got Tom Baker, you got... Uh, War Doctor there, you got Capaldi, Exton, Matt Smith. Oh, you got the Fugitive Doctor, the Joe, uh, Joe Martin oh, one. Go. Uh, oh, that's Tennant again. Bounty Hunter. Hertwee, Colin Baker, Danielson. To do. Uh, oh, that's uh, McGann. Wow. Yeah, literally, wow. Right, hang on. I, I need to see that scene again now properly. I'm so sorry. That was such a monumental moment. I'm much older. There's something much older and far more powerful. I'm a lord of time from the lost and fallen planet of Gallifrey. Now let me go, bounty hunter. We have work to do. Wow. Yeah, wow. Whoa. Oh my god! 
I'm in love. <laughs> With this machine. Oh. Mm -hmm. There's definitely some Captain Jack vibes. I tell you what, when we both get out of this, let's argue across the stars. I like that. Oh, they nearly had a moment there. Now let's get back to this party before anyone else dies. <laughs> I'm so glad they stopped it. I hate the Doctor getting romantic with anyone. The Childa is cosplaying. You said that Childa comes to a planet and tries on people like outfits all for the fun of it. Exactly like cosplay. What? Literally dressing up and playing at Bridgerton. Could be. I mean, those TV signals beam out across the stars. What are these TV signals? No time. Yeah. Uh, we need to get the Duchess outside on her own. And if there's one thing that attracts her is scandal and outrage. I don't see how us dancing will create a scene. Then you uh, should have researched this era a little more. Because yeah. we are scandalous. I mean, just two men dancing together is scandalous and alone. Let alone a black man and a white man. Oh. Now we're having dramatic lighting. I like the music though. Really, really like the music. How dare you, my lord! Oh, well, this is new. <laughs> oh my word! I don't know how I feel right now. Oh, oh, oh! I want to be the doctor. Who wants to fight for the other one? Run. I'm normally the one that says that. <laughs> So they're shape-shifting dirty things. Ugh. I want a new look. They're literally giant chickens and penguins and sparrows and owls. Where are they? Any luck? The stables are empty. Back to the house. We must advance with the wedding. Is anyone just as confused as I am about their plot and their motivations? We're going to cosplay this planet to death. What? You are truly remarkable. And I thought I was interesting. Is she one as well? A ruby Sunday. Yes! Knew it. <laughs> oh, so Ruby's dead. Bye, Ruby. How does it feel to be Lady Ruby? Mm, delicious. I'm sorry. They call her. Surely she's not dead. You keep her safe. I will keep her safe. Or I'll allow her to get turned into a big bird creature thing. And here's the doctor crying again. <laughs> bye bye, Vicka. So I'm confused. So sometimes they take their actual physical face and, and hands and everything and sometimes they literally they take the clothes that they're wearing. This has got to be the weirdest villain I think I've ever seen on this show. And we've seen some weird villains. They have a lifespan of 600 years. It's a long time to suffer. Oh. Oh. That's a bit dark. Try for more! dare you, sir! No! My mum's called Carla and my grand's called Cherry and it snows when I was born and we met Space Babies and I'm really, really sorry. Battle mode. Oh! Oh! Become the Doctor! Oh! Uh-oh! No! Oh. Doctor, press in. We've only got one chance. I can't. He's too much of a coward. <laughs> Press send. They'll kill us. Then this house. Then London. Then the world. You know that. So can you do it? No, of course he can't. And the ninth doctor, he was a coward. Um. Ah! That's a Captain Jack move! Oh! Oh! Huh? 
Where shall we go? Anywhere. Doctor, you don't have to be like this. I have to be like this, because this is what I'm like. Onwards. Upwards. New horizons. Moving okay, on. Okay, can you just fine. shut up a second? <laughs> Well, <clears throat> that was Rogue. You're going to have to give me a bit of time for me to try and piece that together. Because right this very moment, I'm thinking, what was the point of that episode? So let me, let me try and make some sense of it, and I'll be back with you in just a moment. A few moments later. Um, wow, okay. Um... I really don't know where to go with that one. Um, that episode, I was thinking as I was going through that, this feels like the shortest episode of Doctor Who that I think I've ever watched. It sort of flew by so fast. And that's a bit of a problem, I think, for me, because it felt so rushed. And that is a major problem because nothing seemed to flow well in that episode and of course this is me watching it for the very first time maybe once i've edited this video and i've obviously kind of had to watch it a second time uh maybe i might feel a bit differently and maybe then when time has come and i re-watch it and i do a full full in-depth review a la all of my other Doctor Who reviews, again, I might feel a bit differently, but right here and right now, I didn't like that episode, because that felt like it was cribbing from a lot of previous episodes. Um, I, I mentioned it a few times there, that Rogue kind of felt like a, a, like a Captain Jack Harkness. And that's the problem, because we've already got a Captain Jack Harkness. You could say maybe it was a bit similar to Captain John Hart that was introduced into Torchwood. But again, we've already got a Captain John Hart. There felt nothing really new about that character. It just felt like a pretty much a copy and paste. Minor changing the name and changing the face. So that I wasn't a fan of. The the villains, the aliens, that was so stupid. I mean, I like the idea of shape-shifting aliens. I, I do. I, I, I think it, it, it can provide a great uh, basis for, for villainous stories. You know, we've had it with, like, the Zygons. We've... Sort of, in a way, had it with like the Quillotanes in the back in series two, but this, how I I I I felt it so stupid, them going about their cosplaying, it, it felt so silly. I don't know, maybe that's the intention that they were going for. I personally didn't like that. I felt it was so silly, so wishy washy. Um, and I think the problem with having the next episode being called The Legend of Ruby Sunday, having that title announced in advance that that is going to be the next episode, I didn't feel any kind of emotional investment in the sort of fake out that they did with that. Because I was like, yeah, Ruby's not dead. I didn't guess that it was a fake out and it was actually her. I thought they would do something to reverse the effect. So at least that did kind of catch me a little bit by surprise. But not much else. And I suppose we do have to talk about this. I don't know, the 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 hypersexuality of this doctor. And I've said it before on the channel. I hate the Doctor being sexualized and having romantic feelings or loving feelings or sexual feelings. For me, the Doctor should be 
effectively asexual. I don't mind the Doctor being emotional. That is not a problem. I mean, it has become a bit of a running gag that the Doctor, I believe, has now cried in every single episode that Shooting Out Where has appeared in. Whether that is a just an acting choice by Shutagawa, whether that is a writing choice by Russell D. Davis, whether it is something else, I don't know. But it is literally happening in every single episode now. Which I I'm I I, I don't quite like. Because I feel it's taking away the emotional aspect of it. Kind of what I said before, it, it's it's, it's taken away. Like, you think that David Tennant's Doctor, on occasion, would tear up. Not that often, though. And it felt truly earned when it actually did happen. Like, you think about the Doomsday, when the Doctor says goodbye to Rose, and he's burning up the sun to say goodbye. He cries at that point. He cries when he's having to effectively wipe Donna's memory. That felt earned. In every single episode that we've had with this one, I don't feel that he's earned those tears. Which is a weird thing to say, but I really don't think it, it, it's been working. And we've now sort of retconned in I, well, at least I believe it's supposed to be Richard E. Grant. You guys may, may um, tell me that I'm wrong there and it was somebody else. And so my question at this point is, was it the Schalke Doctor from Scream of the Schalke, you know, the 40th anniversary? Because it feels it must be that one. Because if it was going to be from the Curse of the Fatal Death one, you know, the one which had Rowan Atkinson and, and Hugh Grant and all the rest of them, then why wouldn't you show the rest of those? Why would you only show the Russell E. Grant one? Um, and I did, I, I, I did actually do a reaction to the Scream of the Schalke animated thing. I did that uh, uh, back in November for, for the 60th anniversary month. I did a few different reactions and, and that was one of that I did. I thought it was okay but why are we putting it in there is it putting it in there supposedly to go we're making this canon is it because they want to kind of bring him into it in real life and have a live action version of that Schalke doctor is it supposedly one of these supposed pre-Hartnell, you know, doctors that we don't know because of the Timeless Child thing, is it being put in just to kind of reinforce the, you know, the Timeless Child thing, which Russell D. Davis has basically said, I'm not reckoning it, I'm just embracing it. Is that, is that what it is? Is, is he embracing the Timeless Child thing? I don't know. I'm going to have to really scrutinise this when I come to doing a full in-depth review. Right now, I wasn't a fan of that episode. And it's the kind of episode that I should have been a big fan of. Because I like historical pieces. I like emotional stuff. But there was nothing there that really got me in the way that it should have done. What are your thoughts of that episode? Please drop them in the comments below. Please subscribe if you're new. And join me next week for the first part of the finale. The first episode being The Legend of Ruby Sunday. That's going to do it for now. For now, my name's Kevin. I am a geek. And you've been watching Kevin the Geek. <laughs>